Today's reading is from Luke chapter 2, verses 8 to 20. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. This is the word of the Lord. Well, friends, uh, Merry Christmas. I hope you've had a good time so far this Christmas. Well, I wanted to start our time together with some Christmas riddles. How are you on Christmas riddles? Let me give them to you. You have a think about them, maybe even pause, think about them, and then I'll give you the answer. Okay, riddle one. Open me every day for something that can't be beat. Behind each of the doors, you will discover a tasty treat. What am I? An advent calendar. Okay, number two. It gets killed, it gets dressed, it gets trinkets, and everyone smiles looking at its star. What is it? It's a Christmas tree. Uh, what is a, a parent's favourite Christmas carol? A silent night. I wonder how many silent nights you've been having recently. Uh, and this last one, I wonder if you'll get this. Who will never be hungry during Christmas? A stuffed turkey. Well, there's lots of uh, Christmas riddles, uh, small and great. Uh, but the biggest Christmas riddle is people at Christmas. We are the biggest riddle at Christmas. I wonder if you've seen the Myers uh, Christmas ad. Uh, they've attempted to unriddle Christmas for, for us. Uh, Meyer plays with the exasperating Christmas riddle of getting the right present for the right person. Uh, now, that's a riddle, isn't it? Uh, you might remember that the ad shows the girlfriend who says or sings to her boyfriend, whatever, no pressure, I'm easy, uh, when, which the boyfriend, of course, thinks isn't all that easy. Uh, or for the husband who sings, I'm not really sure what surprised me, hun. Uh, <laughs> and you're thinking, yeah, she doesn't have time to surprise you, mate. Um, or, or the prima donna uh, who sings that she wants something, uh, a, a, a look that is so me. Now, clearly, uh, that's not easy to find. Uh, Maya are recommending themselves to the, to the, uh, as the solution to unriddling Christmas for those who are hard to buy for. Uh, but Maya are tapping into something that is very true. People at Christmas are a bit of a riddle. Uh, the question was asked, do people change at Christmas? And that is a great riddle, isn't it? Because we go from these stressed, road-raged, rushed individuals in the week leading up to Christmas, then come Christmas Day, we change into this calm, happy, festive, generous person. And you think, is that real change? Well, it looks real enough, doesn't it? But that's one of the riddles of Christmas. Now, in the original Christmas story, there is a, one particular group of people who undergo a genuine remarkable change. Uh, now, they're a pretty weird group, and it's an unexpected group too. It is the shepherds at Christmas. Uh, and so today, I want to particularly see how the Bible unriddles the change that the shepherds underwent that very first Christmas. Uh, now, the shepherds uh, play quite a weird and unexpected role in that very first Christmas. I mean, shepherds to us are weird anyway, because 
if we do know a sheep farmer, most of us don't, but if we do know them, they, they live on a massive fenced acreage, own a bunch of motorbikes, maybe a few horses living in a nice big country house. Uh, those sheep farmers look nothing like the shepherds in this passage uh, that was read for us. Uh, the, the, these shepherds are sleeping rough on a hill in the middle of the night, keeping an eye on a hundred sheep who are not fenced but walking in the wild, And yet God chose to give the Bible's most important, most urgent news to them. This bunch of rough sleeping roadies in the middle of the night, in the middle of nowhere. Why? Because seriously, if you were God, humanity had said no to you and turned their backs on you. And if you had enough love in your heart not to turn your back on them as God, but instead you were willing to sort out a way to be back in relationship with humanity, not just your traditional people, the people of Israel, but the people of the whole world. If you as God were willing to offer the whole world peace, why would you announce it in the middle of the night? to a bunch of rough sleeping shepherds in the middle of nowhere. There is no public relations agency in New York, Paris, London, who would come back to you with this answer that we read about here. Well, let's have a look at it. Uh, We're in Luke uh, chapter 2, verse 8. You see it there? And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby keeping watch over their flocks at night. Uh, So shepherds, what's their brief? Well, to keep watch, to keep guard, to guard the unfenced sheep, protect them from wolves and thieves, provide for them water and pasture that they need. When over-farmed, guide them to the next hill. It's not a particularly glamorous job. Your mother-in-law wouldn't be telling her friends about it on the Jerusalem social circuit. Though Moses, the most important prophet of the Old Testament, he was a shepherd. King David, the most important king of Israel, he was a shepherd. In fact, he was a shepherd on these very hills outside the city of Bethlehem, the city of David. So so that might be something your mother-in-law might say about you in your defense on the Jerusalem social circuit. He's only a shepherd. But remember, the great King David was a shepherd. Anyway, even though it wasn't wasn't a particularly glamorous role, these shepherds were willing to lay down their life for the sheep. And so I imagine the sheep and the shareholders were pretty glad the shepherds were there uh, to guard and protect in the dead of night, in the middle of nowhere. But for these shepherds, suddenly, the shepherds were doing more than watching. It becomes apparent that God has another thing in mind for these rough sleeping shepherds. Have a look. Verse 9. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. Uh, Verse 10. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, A saviour has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes, lying in a manger. Now, these brave shepherds who lay down their lives for the sheep, they're brave men, right? But they were terrified by this. They were, uh, they're watching the heavenly fireworks of an angel, a messenger. Uh, I've never seen this, so I can't describe it to you. But what do you imagine this was like to have this happening? As it says, the blinding brilliance of the Lord shining around them. What would that be like? Uh, wolves don't terri- uh, terrify these guys. Even other men, thieves don't terrify these shepherds. But clearly, this does. Now, as we listen to this story, as we read this story, uh, the PR agencies in New York, London and Paris are still shaking their heads, saying, why didn't you do this in the main square of Jerusalem Temple on the Sabbath so that everyone could see, tut, tut, tut. But God, in his wisdom, has chosen for it to happen in this way. Why? Well, have a look at the transformation that this brings to the shepherds, that these brave, protective shepherds turn from being protectors to proclaimers. They turn from being watchers to witnesses. 
because they're told two things. One, they're told the great news that a rescuer has been born in Bethlehem, the, the, the city of the great shepherd David. And secondly, they are given the evidence. So, so just in case they thought they'd nodded off and dreamed all of this or that they'd spoke, smoked too much Bethlehem clover, uh, they're given something physical to witness. Not only angels and pyrotechnics, but the somewhat unusual sight of a baby lying in a feeding trough. And, and so they go in search of this evidence. Have a look with me. Uh, verse 15, when the angel had, angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord had told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. So the shepherds find out it's true. It checks out. So what do you do when you've seen angels, when you've felt the presence of the Lord and you've seen that it all checks out, what do you do? Well, you go and tell everyone who will listen and that's exactly what they do. Verse 17, when they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds had said to them. This was God's plan. Whether or not the PR agencies of London, New York, Paris shake their heads and say, nup, too small sale, not nup, nup, too retail, no matter what they say, this was God's plan. And who better to witness than those whose job it is to watch? Uh, who better to travel as those who are equipped to walk the hills at night? And it wasn't just that. The change that the good news instigates it's not just head change, knowing that God has got a plan, having proof, having evidence that God's got a plan. It's more than that. It's heart change, heartfelt celebration of the work of God and his plan. You, you see that there. Uh, they join Mary in being like this. In verse 19, but Mary treasured up these things and pondered them in her heart. Listen to what the shepherds do. Verse 20, the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had seen and heard which were just as they had been told and that is the nature of the good news of Jesus it is proclaimed by those who know it in their heart to be true the news that God wants peace through Jesus is on the lips of everyone who has been changed by that news and the shepherds were changed they were transformed by this news at Christmas it was the news that came with evidence, so it was a logical decision uh, that they were at witness, but it also changed their hearts so that they were praising God for his plan. And that is real change at Christmas. That is the change that God desires uh, as people come to know his son, Jesus Christ. Uh, Jesus who lived the life that we couldn't live Jesus who died the death we deserve and came back to life and secured life and peace for us. Uh, uh, securing peace for all of us who celebrate what he's done in dependence on him. Now we discussed this earlier, do people change at Christmas? I imagine you're, in thinking about this, uh, you might think, well, well yeah, they kind of change at Christmas. But it's not lasting. It's not a genuine change. It's, not a, it's just a kind of a momentary kind of change. And, and we can be a little bit hardened and a little bit cynical at the chances of change occurring in us and the people around us. In that, I wonder if the words of the comedian George Carlin might resonate with you. Uh, he says that it, it, it's, this is the riddle of our time. He says, we have taller buildings but shorter temples. We have more knowledge, but less judgment. We have more experts, but more problems. More medicine, but less wellness. We've multiplied our possessions, but reduced our value. We talk too much, love too seldom, and hate too often. We've, we've been all the way to the moon and back, but have trouble crossing the street to meet a new neighbour. We've conquered the outer space, but not the inner space. We've cleaned the air, 
but polluted the soul. Uh, These observations might resonate with you. It, It might seem that inner real change is impossible. But friends, I offer to you this evidence of change. These rough, sleeping, tough shepherds went from being watchers of sheep to witnesses of God's miracle. Uh, uh, And they went from witnesses of God's miracles to praisers, those who praise God and speak to whomever will listen of all that has transpired and changed. That's the change that God makes possible this Christmas. See, God is seeking change. God is seeking peace with humanity. God is seeking peace with you. I wonder what step in this process of change you're up to. I imagine if you haven't started this process of change, uh, you know someone who has been changed by this news. Now, I'm going to suggest perhaps, um, uh, uh, why don't you ask them what they saw that made them change the way they think about God? Uh, ask them um, what they witnessed that was so strong and compelling enough for them to stop living for themselves and start living for God. Uh, If you want to know more about the change that God seeks, uh, let me commend uh, the course that has already been mentioned. Uh, If you want to know more about how to be at peace with God, if you want to know more about the current state of being at war with God, this course is a great place to uncover those questions. But perhaps that's not where you're at in this process of change. Uh, Perhaps you're further along in the process of change. Perhaps you've witnessed the the reason to change, but you aren't witnessing with the same enthusiasm of the shepherds. Or perhaps you aren't singing like they're singing in their praises to God. Well, friends, we have an opportunity right now to put that right, to put that straight into practice. Because, brothers and sisters, if you trust Jesus and live for him as your king, you are part of the joy that he has brought into the world. Uh, See, you were once in the darkness, but now you're in the light. You were once at war with God, but now you enjoy peace with him. He invites you to call him father. He invites you to call uh, Jesus your brother. And when your time comes, he says, join me in my heavenly home, because you're no longer my enemy enemy but you are my friend he says you're no longer my enemy but you are my child that all happens because the lord came into the world to bring about peace between us and god joy to the world the lord is come let earth receive her king let every heart prepare him room Joy to the world, the Saviour reigns. He rules the world with truth and grace. That's what we're about to sing. And let me say to you, please do enjoy the wonders of his love this Christmas. I'll see you soon.